Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host, Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience, and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their insights. If you'd like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you could give us a positive rating and review, as it will help others to learn about Autism Stories. On today's episode of Autism Stories, I get the opportunity to speak with James Beatty to discuss the relationship of mathematics to animation, and we also talk about the power of mentorship in our lives. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. James, thanks so much for joining me today here on Autism Stories. I am glad to be with you. And I wanted to start off our... Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. I wanted to start off our conversation, James, and learn where does your story in the autistic community begin? Uh... I was first aware that I was autistic when I went to elementary school. I was in a special education classroom, and it was repetitive and boring. For example, we would go over and over simple concepts like numbers 1 through 10 colors and shapes. I knew from my older sister Meredith that in third or fourth grade you were supposed to be learning multiplication or division, at least. Also, of course, I knew that I was not like Meredith because I had all kinds of therapy and services that she didn't. Plus, I don't communicate by talking, so I knew that I was different from everyone else. I did not have a sense of being in the autistic community when I was growing up. I was very much alone in school, from kindergarten to 12th grade. I started in a typical classroom with a communication aid in the 6th grade. From that point on, I was the only person in the room with autism. When my parents would introduce me to other kids that had autism, I felt it was super difficult to get to know them. Plus, it wasn't very frequent. I do have one friend, though, who has been in my life since I was 12, and she is the one exception. We would give together, just the two of us, so that we were able to form a friendship. We have been able to visit each other a lot more since I graduated and moved to Menifee, which is closer to her house. I hope to get to know more people here in general, but also more who are like me. Now, James, you are a graduate a graduate of Azusa Pacific University. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. What did you study during your time at uh, Azusa? When I was in high school, a recruiter for Azusa Pacific University came and talked to my class. He was a really cool guy, and I liked that the school had a Christian perspective of acceptance and appreciation of diversity. The emphasis was on using your God-given talents to help other people, instead of getting a good education so you could graduate and make a lot of money. I studied applied math with a concentration in physics and minored in computer science. I have always been talented with a sense about numbers and math concepts. One of my favorite classes was physics one. The professor challenged me and also believed that I could be successful. Computational physics was another really cool class. It combined physics, math, and computers. We did fast eating projects, and it was so difficult and rewarding to work through them to completion. Mathematical writing was a special class for me. While I was doing research for a paper, I found a study done by some guys at Pixar. 
They examined a mathematical perspective of animation, which linked the meshes of various characters. This led to an independent study course, where I wrote a computer program to animate rotating cubes in space. That was, without a doubt, the hardest project I ever did. Now I use an industry standard software program called Maya, which has the computer program code embedded in it. But doing that college project really gave me an appreciation for what is happening behind the scene of the computer interface. My time at APU was full of challenges, and I would have never made it through without my mom and dad and all the aids I had. They were sensitive to my struggles, persistent, and certain of my inevitable success even when I doubted myself. Now, I consider myself pretty good at math, but I don't think I would have been able to handle that physics, James. Uh, but you went to school and probably got your college degree during one of the most challenging periods of time during the pandemic. In what ways do you think being a student at Azusa Pacific during the pandemic changed your college experience? The pandemic robbed me of having a proper graduation. I spent two years at Citrus College, then four at APU, so my graduation walk across the stage was something that I had dreamed about for a long, long time. My college experience was only slightly tainted. We had online courses for the last four months. The beginning of the COVID pandemic was a very scary and uncertain time. I was afraid that one or both of my parents might die. I was also afraid that I might get it and have to go to the hospital alone, without any way of communicating. The news was filled with death and uncertainty, so my relatives could not come and celebrate with me. Instead of it being a happy time, full of congratulations and parties, it was more reflective and somber. We rented a place by the beach and had a mini vacation with my sister and her boyfriend, along with myself and my parents. They tried to make it festive. But a virtual graduation is just not the same. One bright spot was that my sister organized videos of many of my professors and friends and relatives congratulating me, which was really nice. It may sound a bit self-centered to mourn that experience when other people were having virtual funerals and could not be at their loved ones' deathbeds. But, still, it was a personal loss for me. You were talking a little bit earlier about ma math and animation, and from my understanding, you're currently working on creating a computer animated short. Can you tell uh, us a little bit about that project? I just love computer animation. It allows me to tell a story and perhaps potentially have a positive impact on people. The way my scenes are organized is I try to learn a skill in animation while putting together a good story. My current project is about how a lost dog is reunited with his owner. One thing that I have learned is that successful animation requires three PCs. Persistence, patience, and maintaining a positive attitude. During the course of the last two years, my computer has gotten old and unreliable. Then my new computer broke down three times. Thankfully, my current computer has been doing a good job. I don't like the delays that these mechanical failures have caused, but I have also learned not to worry over the stuff that is not under my control. I am already in the planning stages for my next short animation, and I am eager to start it. I am excited to animate the child skipping with a balloon for the first time. Now, in doing research to prepare to talk to you, I learned that in 2021, you were on a panel discussing the vital importance of AAC and supported typing for 
individuals with autism who cannot speak. For non-speakers out there that don't have a way to communicate, what would be some of the first steps that they and their support teams, their loved ones can take to try to change that? Having the ability to say no or to tell other people your wants and needs, plus being able to express your hopes and dreams is essential to being human. There is a lot of potential for those people with autism who do not have apraxia to learn to talk. I wish I could talk out loud, but the letter board has been huge for me throughout my life. The first step in learning how to use a letter board is to understand that the person with autism who doesn't communicate with speech is more intelligent than you may initially understand. It is a travesty how many non-speaking people with autism are assumed to have an intellectual disability. The history of autism and IQ testing is a terrible, heartbreaking one. I have no doubt that many were sold short and doomed to live their lives without reaching their potential. Next, I would highly recommend either visiting Soma or reading one of her books on rapid prompting methods. She has outlined a course of action that has been very successful with many non-speaking people. Finally, it takes patience and determination. Do not let anyone tell you that it is not possible, including educational professionals. With devotion and trust in the learning process, the great gift of communication is possible. Now, going back a little bit further, uh, I believe in 2017, you gave a presentation on the benefits of mentoring, and I think mentoring is so critical. So I'm interested, what were some of the things you discussed in that presentation? Pastor Miller was a great mentor for me. I was really able to grow and learn with him as both a man and a Christian. After a year or so, he asked me to talk to a university-wide chapel assembly about the benefits of having a mentor, and I agreed. It was about six years ago, but one major benefit that I talked about was that with a mentor you have a person you can be yourself with. You can be vulnerable, and it's a safe place to work on things like anxiety about school, or what to do if you feel rejected or how to handle unreasonable expectations. It was a net positive experience, and hopefully it encouraged other students to sign up for the mentoring program. And um, is there anything that maybe we haven't talked about yet today that uh, you'd like to bring up? I may have graduated, but I think there is still so much for me to learn. I would love to continue learning about animation. Maybe someday get a job with a company. I also am still learning about how to control my emotions and work through disappointments. I have hopes of traveling maybe by train or airplane. I love seeing new places and meeting new people. And James, are you still okay if I ask a couple of follow-up questions? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, you were talking earlier about, you know, graduating during the pandemic and you missed out on, on certain things. You know, you had to do the virtual graduation and you missed out on parties. So I'm someone that kind of gets overwhelmed with parties, but it sounded like you were looking forward to parties. What's your experience in navigating parties?
positive. Energy. Sometimes it is too loud. I might need. There was one other thing that really that was re that was really interesting to me that you were talking about, and definitely IQ testing for us as autistic people. There's lots of problems with with that, but I was really interested, maybe in your experiences with IQ testing, um, in terms of being a non-speaker, and what. And, um, yeah. um, go ahead. Okay. Initially, they had me based very. And I was amazed at the problems. Well, well, James, I really appreciate you making uh, time for the, our conversation. Thanks so much. Listeners. 
I think they'll be very interested, James. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks so much to James for the conversation. Here at Autism Personal Coach, we provide customized coaching for autistics to help improve the quality of our lives. All of our coaches are either autistic or autistic selected for their commitment to trauma-informed and neurodiversity-affirming strategies. They deeply understand burnout, sensory needs, executive functioning, and the importance of special interests. If you're interested in learning more about our coaching, please visit autismpersonalcoach.com for more information. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Autism Stories, and if you did, if you could tell a friend, foe, or anyone you know about it so they could have the same enjoyable and educational experience as you when listening to Autism Stories, it would be very much appreciated. Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.